Um, okay, so this panel is called Yes And, an improvisational approach to inclusion. Uh, I was originally just gonna go with Yes And, but I felt like it wasn't pretentious enough, so we put this part at the bottom, um, which roughly gives you an idea of what the panel will be about. So first of all, we have to introduce ourselves. Uh, I'm Ludwig Hitzman, I'm the editor-in-chief of joystick.com, which is a video game website. Um, and I'm joined by Susan Arndt, who's at the edge there. She is the managing editor, so she keeps everyone in line and cracks the whip. And he's my boss, so please find him very funny. Hilarious. <laughs> Nothing below the level of hilarious. And if you were going to a panel later today called Meet Bioware's David Gator, spoiler alert, it's this guy. Um, and he's the lead writer on, on many of the Dragon Age games, right? All of them. All of them. All and the Dragon Age And there's books, games. and there's <clears throat> the big book of Thetis, and... I didn't do that one. Oh, you didn't do that one? No. Oh, well then. <laughs> <laughs> the hell off the panel. Jeez. So we have a, a guest in spirit, uh, not by, she hasn't agreed to be on this panel, but I am uh, summoning a gif of her. This is Tina Fey. Um, and I, we were listening to the audiobook version of, of uh, Bossy Pants, which is sort of a, a summary of, of how she got to where she was. And one of the parts of the book, uh, she went over the rules of improv and, and what is really important to get right when you're trying to make a funny improvisational scene. Um, and I thought a lot of that could apply to the way that we uh, communicate online today and creating an inclusive environment on websites such as Joystick. Because right now, this is kind of how everyone communicates <laughs> online. <clears throat> they just mash the keyboard and words appear. And you don't have a lot of uh, sort of uh, in-person uh, signals or anything to base uh, judgments or dialogue off of. And if H we think- Hands up if you've ever encountered that guy. Yeah. <clears throat> that used to be me, I think. Because um, when, I, when I communicate, even on my, my, my own website, when I post a comment, this is what I look like. I'm this tiny little thing with a name and a little picture. There's no background. There's no context. Nobody knows you know, where I come from, who, like, how did I grow up, what are my, my biases, what are my perspectives. Nobody really engages with you on that. And, and that's where we, we fall down in our online communication. Everything is just you know, texts and, and tweets and, and Facebook. And when you put all that stuff together, it's like a long stream of, of comments. And in a way, that's akin to storytelling. Like when, I, when we post an article and we have comments at the bottom, there is a story developing there. So if you think of dialogue as a form of storytelling, you want it to be a really good story. <clears throat> and that is where uh, the rules of improv come in because the, uh, the goal with that is to make a better story, to make it funnier, to make it weirder, and to collaborate and tell you know, a better story. So and, and most importantly, to keep it going. Mm -hmm. you know, the, the cardinal sin of improv is making a declarative statement that just kills the scene right there. And a lot of what happens in online communication is someone just puts something out there and just shuts down any opportunity for further discussion or exploration. And so by, you know, if we can get in kind of the headspace of using improv rules to make sure we're not that person, then we can help improve online conversation to continue and explore and discuss. Um, so the first rule, as you can see here, is the first rule of improv is agree, always agree and say yes. So in, in the comedy space, what this means is that if I start a scene and I say, my hair is on fire, and Susan says, no, it's not. I'm looking at you, your hair's not on fire. That's the scene dies, it's not funny. Uh, a better is, example would be if I say my hair is on fire, Susan says. Yes, I've always liked you as a redhead. Exactly, or this is gonna ruin your marshmallow hat. Uh, anything to say, you know, agree and, and agree to the premise, but it's important to note that you are not agreeing with the statement per se. If someone says, you know, Nazis were really cool, uh, you don't say yes. You don't, that's not what you mean. That's not when we, we say you agree. Um, you agree to a premise or you agree to the fact that someone has the right to you know, leverage a complaint or say that they feel uncomfortable. Um, so it's, it's a very particular kind of agreement. And I think, David, you engage with a lot of fans and you can't just shut people down and say no. Like you, you try to, to have a conversation. I am transfixed by your gif. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're, say, you're basically, in, in this context, saying yes is not saying, yes, I agree, agree with you, person saying hateful, horrible thing. It's, yes, I agree that you are a human who has valid reasons for believing what you believe, and I, yes, I believe that you have the right to beliefs that I don't necessarily agree with. 
it's not about agreeing with a statement or an idea, it's about an establishment of respect. Like I am no more valid than you are valid, so why don't we try to meet together as humans and have a conversation where we can both understand and agree each other, even if we don't ultimately agree. Yeah, I think that a lot of people online uh, believe that the rules of communication are different than they are in, in person, and it's, yeah. it's rather strange. You meet someone in person, and of course there are all sorts of cues, like you were saying, mm -hmm. the, not knowing who that person is, their background, those mm -hmm. are things you can pick up on fairly readily when you're talking to somebody in person, but online it, it's just in, in the text. But um, I think, I think uh, people forget that the rules aren't that different even when you are communicating in text. And shutting someone down, even if you feel perfectly justified, is just mm -hmm. going to put someone on the defensive. And that's not right. going to be, that's gonna, not going to lead to communication. And thinking of a, of a community that is attached to a website, for instance, it's still a relatively abstract concept because it is, it's not a physical space. It's not something where you see people face to face, but you get to know people yeah. and you can't create an inclusive environment unless there is some tacit agreement to, to follow a sort of philosophy. Um, but my question for the other panelists are, how do you put that, that feeling of someone is wrong on the internet aside? How do you <laughs> cope with that? How do you put that be beside you and say, yes, I will agree. This is the first step I take. One of the, to go back to what David was saying, when someone is, when you're talking to somebody face to face, right, you can tell when the person that you're with is disengaged and they're just waiting for your mouth to stop moving so they can say their, their piece. They're just, they're not listening, they're just waiting for the cue so they can. They're talking at each yeah, other. Exactly, so they can talk at you, right? In the online space, there are no physical cues. And even more, if you're not actively saying something, you may as well not be there because you poof, you go away. That little, that little tag that Luddy showed a second ago goes away, so he's not even there anymore. Um, so it's even more important to try and meet in the middle and engage to have a conversation so you're not just continually talking past each other. And uh, we can move on to, to this example that I, that I pulled because I feel like I should use an example where someone says no. And uh, here's a relatively straightforward story that we ran about the IGDA doing a survey and the number of women in the industry. Uh, it's going up, but it's still way below 50%. Um, this is a story about the video game industry. There should be no question about why we are reporting on it, because we care about the people who make the games, and games are made in and by a society. It's clearly important. It influences everything about games. Um, but even that premise was not agreed to by many of our readers who responded, uh, here's a great one, lack of women in development roles is not isolated to gaming, but in general, and it's not due to discrimination, it's due to lack of women interested in those roles. Susan, you're clearly not interested in video games. I've never seen an article about lack of women on fishing boats, oil rigs, mines, etc. So this is very clearly a no. <laughs> The, the comedy has died, as you can feel, just by reading this comment. Uh, and then at the bottom here, we also have, cool, what video game is this about? Uh, again, implying, uh, implying that we are not covering a video game. This is not relevant to a video game website. Um, so how do I suppress my someone is wrong on the internet feeling here? How do I say yes? <laughs> Difficult, isn't it? This is why I have other people on the panel, because I don't really necessarily know the answer to this. this well, this is... It, it's literally part of my job, is to try and improve the community of our site to make it more welcoming and more engaging so that people are more inspired to come and have conversations because that is, well, A, I mean, that's the really cool part about being part of a community is you get to talk to people who are into the same things you are, and that's great, and that's so cool, and that's kind of why I show up to work every day, and maybe to play games. But, <laughs> but then also, like, you know, that want to hit you in the face with a brick feeling doesn't go away <laughs> when someone is, is doing that sort of thing. Um, but one of the great uh, aspects of being able to communicate online is not only that you get to uh, talk to all sorts of different people, you don't have to respond immediately. You can read that, you can have the reaction, and then you can take a breath. And you can think about what is the positive way to move forward from here. And sometimes that is not engagement. Because let's be honest, there is that percentage of people who are just trolls. They're always just going to be trolls. They just want to wind you up. And there's nothing you can do. Do not, you, you cannot fix that. Don't even try. Just don't go there. But I think that breath is necessary so that you can 
try to parse which portion of, of people these, these comments are falling into. I have a relevant example, actually. Ooh. Oh, good. Um, it was a few years ago now, um, but on, our, on the Bioware forums, there was a, a gentleman by the name of Bastel, I believe, who um, posted that the, the lack of attention to the, the straight male gamer I remember crowd this. Uh, was, was, a, was essentially oppression. Uh, and that the, the choices that we offered, um, you know, uh, such as Isabella, who was exotic, quote unquote, uh, it was insufficient. I mean, and, and, and the thing is, uh, like what you were saying, the, the, the initial response I know I had, which was, was basically to go in and, you know, and, and, and <laughs> tell him off, but uh, taking a breath, uh, stopping and thinking, okay, you know, I, I could go in and I could be, I could show withering disdain and that would be fun for me. Yeah. Uh, but I thought, okay, at the very least he was, he was being polite and as misguided as I may have thought uh, his, his conclusions were, the yes is uh, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt and think, okay, he probably holds on to this belief for some reason, and, and, and maybe I don't agree with that, but that doesn't mean that he's an unthinking moron, necessarily. <laughs> no, no, that, 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 that is something like, like the, it's very easy to, to demonize yeah. somebody yeah. in your own head, and suddenly you're, you're, you're just sort of, uh, even though their, their, their opinion may be ignorant, that doesn't mean it's malicious. Mm -hmm. Ignorance is not maliciousness, right? Ignorance is a lack of education. It's right. a lack of other perspectives. And I mean, and, and I, I had to stop for a moment and think it, it is actually uh, uh, my duty in a way to, to step up and be the bigger person here and at least make the attempt. Like, I mean, there are obviously are there going to be people that are, that are just trying to get your goat. But if you, if you encounter somebody who's, who's not doing that, well, we can meet them and treat them as we would like to be treated if, if we were posting an opinion that was considered unpopular, right? So I, I talked to him and I explained uh, what, what I felt was in a, in a reasonable fashion exactly what uh, the, the romances in our games were, were meant to do and who they were for and not necessarily, like who they weren't necessarily meant to uh, exclusively uh, treat. And it, it actually they got picked up and went far and wide. And, and even though Bastel himself, because he, he responded later, he, he sort of <laughs> went right over his head. Um, it reached so many people and spoke to them. And a lot of people, you know, it was kind of sad how amazed they were at, wow, it's great that a company is actually cool on these issues. That, that, that was kind of the sad part. But uh, the fact is that, that uh, uh, I think with that post and that, you know, my, if I had flew, flown off the handle, sure, mm -hmm. I would have told him off and I would have felt good for a second, but nobody would have, would have come out of that feeling good about it. And I think the fact that I, that I did try to, to treat with him um, reached a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And you wouldn't have achieved anything. Um, I think the, the important thing to remember is when you try to, to educate someone or try to help them understand something or uplift them, you're raising them up and that thing that went over their head hits them in the face and now they can't avoid it. Um, we're moving on to the second rule here. The second rule of improvisation is not only to say yes and uh, you're supposed to agree and then add something of your own. And this is where the comedy comes in or the fun part of communication because you need to put yourself in there because uh, you've agreed and you are on equal footing and this is where the change starts happening. Um, do you have any sort of advice for people who are getting to this part and, and try to put something in of their own without seeming argumentative or, or hostile? Well, I, th I think what's really important and also incredibly difficult is to not go into a confrontation assuming the other person is coming out swinging. It may, you may react to it that way. It may make you feel that way. You may read something that really hurts you or upsets you or offends you, and that is a valid reaction. It is, I think, too many people's default to assume that that was the intent of the speaker. Like, I said this just to fuck with you because I don't like you and I don't like the things you do. No, they just maybe, and, and you know what? Maybe they did because some will. We know that. 
But it's also entirely possible, A, they had no idea that what they were saying would be offensive or that it was inappropriate, or that B, they simply lack the kind of larger perspective it would require to understand that, hey, that thing you're saying, kind of uncool. And so that's your opportunity as someone with a greater perspective to just be like, hey, I want to let you know that what you said gave me this reaction. Here's why it gave me that reaction. And if you, I think trying to achieve understanding is often more important than trying to achieve agreement. Obviously, we want people to agree with us. Right? We want people to come over to our side, to say, yes, I was a complete jackhole, you're so right. Uh, now I have seen the light and I will totally feel and behave exactly the way you do. That's what we want. It's validating, you know, we feel like we've won, we've done a justice, oh, you know, we get a cape, it's great. But understanding is even more important because if you can, if you can have that kind of meeting of the minds, it shows respect and conversation and discussion and growth comes from respect. But you gotta start there. I think it's more imperative for the people who, who want the understanding uh, as opposed to, I think there's, there's often um, a prevalence in, in, in people, especially people who talk about these issues a lot to kind of, they, and then I, it's completely understandable why they do, but at some point, it seems like a lot of them just run out of patience. Sure. And they expect yeah. everyone to either come up to their level or, you know, basically they're just done with them. And, and, and it's hard. It's hard to, to sort of uh, uh, to take that breath and to repeatedly try to address mm -hmm. people who have not had those conversations, who are, who are not at your level, and, 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 and not uh, expect that everybody has has been as if they've been present for all the same conversations that you have. It doesn't happen. It doesn't. And and, and I mean, uh, you're you're not you're not doing yourselves any favor. I mean, you're going to set yourself up for a lot of disappointment. Yeah. And and it's tough. It is hard. It is. Yeah. This is not. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about easy things here. It is. It can be demoralizing. Like there are times where I think I we we put an article on the website and the comment section is the an acid pool that is slowly eating its way up. Yeah. Um, to what you've done. But it's important to, to engage with those people and understand that uh, sometimes it is an easy misconception. Even, even when we write about uh, a show like Gamer X, a lot of people will come onto the comments and say, well, what's the point of this? Like, aren't, doesn't everyone you know, like games? Like, why are we separating this out? And it's because, well, things are not equal and we are not equally represented everywhere. Uh, and, and sometimes that comes as a surprise to those people. You have to use this as a, as a uh, not just to maintain the dialogue, but to inform an increased discovery of, of uh, shows like this. Yeah, and try not to use like things like buzzwords. I, I, I found, for instance, uh, privilege is very relevant. It, it, it's like what you just said, the person who comes in and, sit, and you say, talk about Gamer X, and they say, well, why is that even important? Now, they're privileged, because it's, it's like, well, it's not important to you, but that doesn't mean it's not important. Right. You mean that, that, that you're, you're being privileged, but privilege sometimes gets thrown around like an attack word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Check your privilege in yeah, particular. Check your privilege. And yeah. then maybe and that puts people right on the defensive, right? So yeah. you throw out buzzwords, which, which you may fully know the definition for, mm -hmm. but they may not. So like it's, it's, it's yes, privilege is, privilege, is not, privilege does not mean they're racist or homophobic or sexist. I mean, it, it could, but privilege is just not, not, being aware of other viewpoints and, and, and perhaps uh, not assigning importance to the fact that other people may think that that, that viewpoint is important. Mm -hmm. And that's, that, if you explain that to somebody, I'm sure they'd be like, oh, I guess that makes sense. Yeah, I mean, I'm a guy. How much, how much could I really know about, about women, for instance? I mean, I, I know women, but I'm not gonna, the, the things that are important right. to women aren't necessarily going to be important to me. And that's, that's not a bad thing. That that's just the way it is, because, just by virtue of my being a man. So once you explain that, they'd be like, "That's the the adding to it without going right right to the 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 you know engaging them in a conversation and and, and leading to that point where they realize, oh, okay, I guess I could see why this might not be important to me, but other people might feel it differently." Right. And just to to kind of illustrate what we've been talking about and why this stuff matters, even though. Uh, it's hard and it's frustrating and, and we deal with so much rampant negativity and argumentativeness and all that. When we first started publishing uh, stories about Gamer X, the comments were poison. They were just straight 
poison hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments with every horrible word you could possibly think of. Why do we need this? Oh, well, I'm gonna go run a straight con and that like that. Um, <laughs> which is every other goddamn con in the world. <laughs> And uh, the most recent one, and we, we, and over the course of several months, we have dived into the comments of, this is why a, a convention like this is important, and this is why these things matter, and this is why, and, that, and we've been waging that war in the comments. And uh, we ran the most recent post, just saying that Ludwig and I would be here, and hey, come see us. And there were, st the, the poison has gone away, there's still the lack of understanding to a, to a lesser degree. This, there's still the I don't get it. But the community has now started saying, well, here's, here's why. And, you know, I, I don't think I, I, I personally don't see the need for it, but I get why they want one. So it's taken effort, but we have seen change. You know, we have gotten people to go from either I don't give a shit to, or, or worse, this is stupid, to, okay, it's not for me, but I get it. Which doesn't seem like a major win, but that's a major win. Like, that's pretty huge. You've gotten people to start thinking outside their immediate scope of vision. That, that's pretty big. And I think the, the other flavor of, of a lack of saying yes and is, is actually in, in the conversations we have about video games themselves. Like when people get upset that you bring out the fact that you know, maybe this, this video game character is a little racist. Maybe, maybe this premise is, mm -hmm. is you know, uncomfortable. Um, because there's this sort of deeply rooted anxiety that you know, my, my hobby and my favorite medium should be perfect and I want it to be as, as good as it can be so I will say no whenever someone brings in, you know, shades of it that are not good, shades of, shades of it that should be changing. Right. And, and that's another point where someone, should, if you say yes and, we will, you know, see better video games. I think people use a, <clears throat> the way they use logical fallacies when making those arguments too. If you say something like, well, that premise is racist. I think that uh, in their heads, the, they will just go to, well, what's the fallacy called, where they just go to the extreme and they argue as if that's the only alternative? Sorry? Slippery slope. Slippery slope, yeah, th th there's a Latin term that I, I'm just escaping oh, me, but. No need to show off. Well, that's not Latin. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, ad absurdum. Uh, that, that, that they are arguing, okay. You're both very So the only way to make this, this premise, <laughs> <laughs> the only way to make this premise not racist then must then be to make it so blandly gen generic and, and, and you know, where, where you know, the, we go from being racist to now the character must be running through a field of poppies, holding hands with a, you know, like a United Benetton ad and then, <laughs> okay, that's not what we were suggesting was the alternative, but you know, like that, that kind of uh, ridiculous that, that where they, where they where they jump right to that, yeah. as if that's the only possible conclusion, and then they leave no space for actual conversation on mm -hmm. the subject. Right. And I think that you're getting into a conversation there at that point where video games should explore difficult subjects, but that doesn't necessarily imply endorsement of those subjects. Right. Yeah. Um, and then that's it. Questions. <laughs> and we have a cat gif. <laughs> <laughs> Probably gonna take that off because it's very distracting. <laughs> I was, I was gonna say, one. take it off because there's no way we're beating that cat. I mean, <laughs> oh lord. <laughs> oh, oh no. there was someone at the back there. Yeah, sorry.
My case is a little bit different because, um, you know, I am den mother. This is my yard. You know, it is, it is my part, literally part of my job to facilitate conversation. Uh, so all thing, you know, if I see a conversation that really isn't uh, directed at me and yet is going awry, I step in and be, you know, hi, I'm the adult in the room and try to work things out, um, especially if it's starting to get heated and nasty and personal, just by coming in there and being very, I understand you're upset about this, but let's make sure we're having a respectful conversation, blah, 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 blah. Um, and, and that's something really anybody can do, is just to, to kind of step in and say, this is going in eight different directions, y'all are starting to freak out, how about we bring it on back down a little bit, and you know, I think what you're trying to say is, and I don't understand why you're saying, could you explain something like that? I think that's something anybody could do, but I don't know that you have to feel obligated to do so necessarily at all times. And, and part of the skill that you develop as you live on the internet more and more is being able to recognize when something could you know, turn into a fire, when it mm -hmm. is appropriate to step in. Or, that's much a, it's a personal comfort thing sometimes. Uh, when something makes you feel uncomfortable and you can see this conversation going in a really bad direction uh, and you have the power to step in and you do. We will also tag team it because we get worn out. I mean, it. Yeah, we have to clean our hazmat suits every now and then. I, I think that that is actually a good point. I mean, uh, I know uh, when I go onto our forums, if I'm, if I'm sort of doing it on a daily basis, uh, I think there reaches a point where I, I just am at full saturation yeah. level and I think the mistake a lot of people make is that they, they continue past that point. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that there's some times where it's just like, oh, I'm just so tired of, the, of these people. And it's like, that's the mistake I make is that I've read so much of it. I start to sort of, mm -hmm. uh, they become a, a, a single entity. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we do that. We, we sort of, uh, uh, that group of people now becomes one voice, even though they, that's not true. Like, I can say fans, fans of Bioware. They have every single, every different opinion across the board. So if you treat them like a single entity, it's like they're they're they're, they're schizophrenic, crazy person who never agrees on uh, with themselves ever. And it's like, well, okay, at that point, it's probably best to step back, yeah, and remove myself from that that input for a while. And 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 that, that that's the same thing. It's probably good for for the stuff in my hands. But if it just becomes too much. It is actually okay to step away from the internet. Yeah, absolutely. Because once you're in that headspace, and you know when you reach that point, you will start reading things very specifically. Mm -hmm. You will start reading things in a way that fuels your particular angry fire. You will fire. hear a different voice in your head yeah. from yeah. the person that you are reading it. Yeah, and so that is the time to say, okay, I. This is not something I can deal with rationally right now. And that's okay. That doesn't make you a bad person. That doesn't mean like you're crazy or whatever. That is a r responsible thing to do is recognize your own limits as an emotional human. Step away, go, be with nature. It's like that scene in the movie where someone has to disarm the nuclear weapon and they're like, listen, you've, you're overexposed. We need to switch you out. And like, no, just five more minutes. And you know that guy's going to die. You don't want to be the guy who dies. Like you need to <laughs> tap out. Use teamwork because as soon as you enter this terrible mood, you are becoming less useful in what you're trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Listen to your friends too. I mean, I'll be in my office and I'll read something on our forum or on Twitter and I'm like, and I'll announce to the rest of the writers and I'll be like, I'm totally responding to this guy. Yeah. And they'll come in and they're like, Dave, Dave, don't. <laughs> Don't do it, Dave. And I'm like, but I want to. <laughs> they just stay, stay, make me step away. We do a lot of uh, responding in our personal chat room. So it's like, here's what I would say. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that is actually a good point. Yeah. Sometimes it's good just to get that, 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 that visceral reaction out of your system. Delete, delete, delete. Yep. Okay, now the real response. <laughs> and I am human again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go to that side, right there. What's your name? Uh, Scott. Oh. Hey, yes, you have. <laughs> <laughs> Joystick has associated with it. Wow, that's way better. Um, I guess it's not officially associated, but there's like a fun Tumblr website of yep. like joystick comments yep. and, and sarcastic gifts. Yep. And I'm just kind of curious, how do you feel that 
how do you sort of reconcile that with this with this yes and approach? Because you're you're kind of making fun of your commenters, and I don't know if those are just examples of people take it to an extreme where you've decided that there is no, you know, there is no kind way to do that discourse, or I don't know. I'm just kind of curious to hear how you sort of reconcile those two sides. To for people who are not aware, um, one of our writers has a Tumblr which is called Dear Trolls. And she will take uh, comments or ex excerpts from comments in our uh, stories and uh, post them with a GIF that is in response or is commentary or is funny. And in uh, many cases, it is, there is definitely a mocking tone. I think we have to it, say that. Um, in some cases, it's just a, what? I don't. I don't think those words go together that way. Like, but in most cases, it's a, oh, oh, honey, no, kind of thing. Um, well, you're the boss, so you should probably well, handle that Well, I mean, I think one. so. It is, it is separate, and we don't you know, uh, encourage people to, to worm their way on there, because you know, some people think it will be funny to actually appear on, on Dear Trolls. True. Um, and Dear Trolls, is, is, it, it runs a very wide uh, range of, of sort of Emotion. I wouldn't say it's mocking. It's it's sometimes funny. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. we use nice comments and, and put a thank you gif on there, um, and it's it's more about uh, having another venue to participate. And this one's a little more jovial, I would say. Um, it's certainly not meant to to make people feel like they're being mocked. But I think a lot of response to that is when someone is singled out when they said something, it is more. Uh, almost a sense of guilt in a way because you're, you're actually calling them out on something that is truly offensive and really does not belong on the site, even if we agree with this premise of yes and. Sometimes things are just like so out of left field that uh, the only way to respond is, is with a funny gif. And I think that, that is disarming in some way. It's better than us you know, directly attacking that person or sending them an email or it's just like, okay, this was very funny, but you know, this, we're putting this on Dear Trolls because this was trolling behavior. And one, one thing I, I do think it's important to point out is it's not about the person, right. it's about the comment. Yeah. Um, and if you say something like, you know, no girls play video games, yeah, bitch, I'm putting you up on Dear Trolls, because come on, <laughs> come on. I think that that is actually something that, uh, an issue I've seen a lot of is that the, the nature, the real trolls, uh, I think it, it's not, I mean, I'm sure there are some of them that are, liter that are literally out to make people angry and they, yes. they, they fully intend to do that. Fine. The, the, those ones are, you, you will just never be able to reconcile. I think there are a lot of people that just uh, are one step above that, that delude themselves. And I've seen the, the, the sentiment expressed a lot. For instance, we ban, if we ban someone from the Bioware social forums, uh, the response you will see a lot of is, well, they banned me because I had an opinion yeah. they, they did not like. Yeah. And I think there is this assumption for a lot of people that, that, act, that interact on the internet is that uh, any kind of rudeness or, or, or confrontationalism to them is just static. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. the, the price of entry for interacting on the internet. Why do you pay attention to that? If I come at you and I say, blah, 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 you should be paying attention to my words and my opinion and not concern yourself with how right. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm presenting those opinions. There are other forms of behavior. It's not, it's, sometimes it's just not discussion. Sometimes it is harassment. Sometimes it's yeah. just you know, venting. Um, and that's, that's slightly different from, from the philosophy that we're trying to apply. Yeah. Um, pink over there. circumstances occur where you really want to talk about something a little more advanced than that or something just different than that, yeah. but it keeps on getting derailed to the same repetitive yep. argument with the same, like, to the same people with the same crap. <laughs> it doesn't usually happen with the same people is the thing. And even though, and it is exhausting to have the same conversation over and over and over again. But for the person on the other end, it's the first time they've had that conversation, right? So um, I'm, I'm going to throw out that word privilege. Like, I got it. You know, I'm the person running the website. I've got the voice. I've got the power. I feel like it's my obligation to meet folks more than halfway because I do have that uh, opportunity and power and voice. And so if that means 
I got to do basic humanity 101 a hundred times, even though I'm like, I can't believe I got to do this again. Then that's what I'm going to have to do. You know, that's my role in making everything better and more inclusive for everybody. Because that's the thing, like, unless someone does that, who, how are they going to know? You know, somebody can't learn what you're not willing to teach. Um, Chuck. <laughs> Actually, just a quick comment about the Dear Trolls thing. Oh, thank you. I think, um, like, my take on it is that it is another channel where it humanizes everybody, and it is a good reminder that, no, you are talking to people there. There's only yeah. so much you can say as an official representative of Joystick, but you are talking to people, and there are, you know, actual humans on the other end of the thing. My other question was kind of related to the other ones about um, that idea of patience, and it seems like, especially now, uh, there is, I'm trying to think of a, a better way to put it than coddling, because that's way too severe, but there's an idea that we have to entertain and listen to every viewpoint. And mm. I, it seems like a lot of times that is used for uh, obfuscation and mm -hmm. uh, stalling. Like, um, we see it a lot politically, but the idea being that as long as you're polite in how you word something, mm. you can say whatever you like, even if it's like a really harmful idea. Yeah. And how do you deal with that where like, it's easy to say, okay, you're being a complete jackass. Uh, you're using, you know, awful language, get off the forum immediately. First, the per versus the person who is saying, you know, well, I don't believe that, you know, gay couples have the same rights as everyone else, and my voice is just as valid as anyone else. It's just a difference of opinion. You, you get that a lot too, the, 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 the overly precious people regarding their, their opinion, the, 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 the inherent value applied to the fact that this is my opinion. Oh, you, well, it's not, can't be wrong, it's just my opinion. It's like exactly. you can and have an opinion and still be wrong. <laughs> it, it seems like it's used a lot to try to throw it back and it's like, oh, you know, liberals are tolerant of everything except people who disagree with them. And it's like, no, that's not the, that's, that's not the idea. It's like, how do you deal with that? Like once you get to the point where people aren't breaking outright rules, but mm -hmm. they're just saying, they're still being harmful to the discussion. Um, well, I think if you, if you tie that back to the, the comedy improv premise, uh, there are some times when someone will open with a premise that is impossible to agree with because it is in such bad taste or, mm. or uh, it, it triggers something in you that, that alerts you to the fact that there is no room for agreement. Like that, that possibility is not even there. Um, do you agree with that, Susan? Oh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm over here pushing my leftist agenda. Oh, of course. <laughs> This is an actual comment that, uh, that we got. Um, again, the post oh, where we announced- it was a leftist ideology, I believe. No, that. it was agenda. Oh, okay. It was agenda. Uh, person well, commented- I'm pushing my gay agenda down people's throats, which is a comment that I love. Is it the best? <laughs> Excuse me, could you please stop existing and pushing your agenda? Okay. But, By the virtue of but existing- But it's down their throats. There's like, there's, there's a Freudian element to that that is just marvelous. I know. Just close your mouth. <laughs> Pushing it deeply down their throat. No, we, we, we posted a, a, a news post saying, literally, all it said, GamerX happening this weekend, we're gonna be here, here's what the panel is called, it's at noon on Saturday. And a commenter came out with uh, accusing us of conflict of interest much? And I said, I said, well, I, okay, I, I'm, I want to address your concern, but I honestly don't understand it. I, I don't know what you're saying. So, so you said yes, you said yes. Yes, and. I said yes, and I don't, huh? And he went on to say that we were, uh, uh, what we were doing was journalistically unethical, uh, to which I said, I, I'm, I really am genuinely confused. I'm so sorry. What ethics do you feel that we've broken pushing your leftist agenda? At that point, and this, this goes to the, something I call the 80-10-10, 10, 
10% of people are going to buy whatever, it's a sales thing actually, 10% of people are gonna buy whatever you're selling no matter what you do. It's also called preaching to the choir. 10% of people, trolls, never gonna buy what, you, what you're selling no matter what you do. Those are that, this guy's that and that 10%. It's the other 80% that you gotta worry about. When Mr. Leftist Agenda comes out, there's nowhere to go from that. So I called him adorable and told him to have a nice day. <laughs> That sounded like a euphemism, like you actually told him to yeah, you know, no, do I did. something terrible to himself. But no, she was, she was really that nice. Yeah, like you're adorable. Um, Pudding. Gentlemen over here. I have uh, one really quick question and one kind of longer question. Susan, what is happening in your avatar right now? Like, uh, that's I, Vanessa Schneider from PNO3. Okay, I need yeah. to watch that. What? I had to watch that. I didn't know it was. A, oh, it's I a game. Play it. Yes, it's a game play. Cube game. It's a GameCube game from Different Capcom. Program. It's a shooter. It's amazing. It's Go good, get it. That character is called <laughs> Vanessa Z. Schneider. Vanessa Z. By Schneider. The way. Uh, my other question was whether or not this specific approach you're talking about today um, is has been used with your joystick staff. Is that how you uh, train, talk to, address how your staff should interact with people in the comments? or if this is a newer thing you're brainstorming on or, or, working with, or working with now, and if it is newer, how did you address with your staff, your writers, how they should or could be connecting with the commenters? Um, well, it's, it's already sort of embedded in us just by virtue of our, our daily actions and you know, the way that I would like people to, to work on the site, and all of that stuff filters down, and that's how we came up with this process. Um, I, I would say the improv angle was, was something that I chose just because of, uh, you know, bossy pants. I read that recently, and then um, it, it seemed like a good way to, to sell it to other people and make it easy to understand, because it's really just two words that you need to remember, and that's yes and. And, and the philosophy is, is more ingrained in Joystick at this point, like on, almost on a subconscious level in some ways. Um, and it's, it's also reflected in who we choose to work with and, and who we choose to hire and, and grow the site that way. Does that answer the question? Yes. Okay. Probably have time for about two more questions. Mm -hmm. uh, David, you pick one. You were there with the, with the colored hair. <laughs> uh, sort of building on what he was saying earlier, one of the things that I sort of wonder about is um, with trying to engage with the variety of opinions on these things, don't we kind of shift towards making spaces less welcoming to the marginalized voices. Um, I mean, I know myself, as someone who's been gaming for a very long time, that I'm very careful about which communities sure. I talk to or mm -hmm. reveal myself to even, because it's incredibly toxic. And I, I, I do see a shift where we get to hear more, but like, I, I don't know, like what's the balance point? I, I would say, I would just, the one thing I would point out, and I, I, I suspect it's not, the most popular opinion. I, I'd say that there is only so far you can go to make spaces more welcoming. There is a, there's a point at which I think that the, um, the expectation starts to become like, like these, sits, these spaces have to be sanitized in order to be welcoming. And that's not necessarily where you want to go. Like, I mean, okay, uh, I'm a gay man. At some, at some point, I, I got to sort of accept that uh, I cannot make the world conform itself around me. Mm -hmm. uh, the, being gay is, 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 is kind of a rough road, and, and I, I, when I came out, I, I accepted that that was part, going to be part of my life. I would like to work to make the world more accepting, but part of that onus is, is on me. And uh, if I am determined to only engage in environments where I'm never going to be confronted by people who are different than me and, and maybe perhaps hostile or, or whatever, then it really, the ultimate responsibility lies on me to choose where I go or not go. But there, there, that, 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 that is not to say that, that uh, spaces can't be made more welcoming. But, uh, no, I think you're absolutely right, but it, it goes uh, both ways both on ways. that, in that like, you can't make everybody feel and believe the way you do. Mm -hmm. Straight dudes don't get to make everybody feel and believe the way they do either. Yeah. And I think by supporting each other in these community spaces, you know, someone comes out and says something that is, you know, insensitive or, you know, at, at best uninformed, you know, uneducated. Um, when we step in and say, hey dude, or lady, 
um, what you're saying is pretty uncool and here's why, then someone who is marginalized, who sees that that conversation is happening, can feel more welcome. Like, oh, wait, you know, this wasn't happening to me, but I do see that there is support there and it's not just, whatever, say whatever you want. Um, it's important to, for us to recognize and respect that inclusion and safety means inclusion for everybody, even straight white people. They just don't get to act like jerks. That's the difference. We have to hold up that second half. Not you don't to get paint to them all like with the same brush. Either, of course right? not, of course not. Unless it's rainbow colored. <laughs> <laughs> um, front row here. Mostly because your shirt is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I reject your Piano 3 agenda, by the way, because the movement controls in that game were just, just heretically awful, so. That's fine. I totally accept that. You're wrong, <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> so in that case, the response so, was yes, and you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> so my question, um, we all play multiplayer games, and in multiplayer games, we're competing with each other, so there's a lot of shit talking. That's, that's human nature. We want to shit talk. We're going to want to shit talk as much as the other person wants to shit talk. I disagree with that innate premise. <laughs> I do, but, but please continue. Not shit talk in the sense that you are a bad person, but I am a winner and you are a loser this time, so haha, -ha, at least, right? There's a lot of competitiveness is what you're saying. Um, and we all know the value of pointing out when, when the shit talk goes to bad places and marginalizes people. And sure. We, we, know to, we know to speak up, right? In real life, like when you're playing sports, this is relatively easy. Like, I used to play basketball with a bunch of dude bros, and whenever they would say, ha, fag, you would give them a little punch in the shoulder, and say, like, hey! And they'd be like, I'm sorry, sorry, wrong. Um, online, that's harder. Yeah. Uh, how do you find the right cadence for doing that without being that guy with a chip on your shoulder and ruining the fun for everybody? <sighs> it's tough, because I'm the chick, so I gotta do that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if you've ever played Halo, fag is pretty much the, the number one word. Oh, for sure, for sure, for sure. But I'm not necessarily in a multiplayer environment, but as someone who is literally the only girl in the room for a lot of game stuff, um, I'm always that broad. Granted, who's the, number, like, the number two word is bitch. Right? Like, <laughs> well, bitch, please. Um, <laughs> What I, I don't have a really good answer for that. What I do, because I, it's something I personally struggle with. Like, I hate, I'm like, am I always the person who has to bring this up? Because there's more to me than that, right? But at the same time, it bothers me. So what is that balance? I think the best I've managed so far personally, and, and maybe you guys will have better answers, I pick my days. I pick my days where I have the inner strength to be like, knock it off, not acceptable. And then I have my days where I just cannot be the soldier. I just can't, it's not my turn. And I'm just gonna have to let people do what they're gonna do. Um, I believe in fighting the good fight. I acknowledge you can't fight the good fight every single day. Picking your battles. Yeah, and then yeah. shit talking is like, a, there's a tone to it sometimes and there can be context to it. Like sometimes, if it's in person for instance, you can tell what the boundaries are, you can tell where it switches from sort of a, a camaraderie to an outright attack. And that can be, if it's, a, if it's a stranger online, you're basically taking a risk by saying things like that and, and you, you run the risk of really offending someone and making them feel bad for being there. And so I think generally you should, there needs to be a level of measurement from the person who wants to do the shit talking, looking around him and see whether or not what are my, my limits here? What will be okay? And that can be very difficult to do in like one round of Halo. Yeah. It also, I think it changes dramatically if you're playing with friends or strangers. Yes. Like if this is a friend of yours, then you absolutely be like, this is not acceptable. You are hurting me and we are friends. If mm -hmm. it's a stranger, I'm not sure you can, you can convince certain people that fag is a bad word. I will, I will say though that there is a, uh, a element of groupthink to multiplayer, mm -hmm. where a lot of the guys who do that would never do that in real life, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and they do it because they're sort of a group bro mentality. And there, you will not see something change so fast than when they, if they suddenly get the impression that everybody on in their whatever group they're playing with does not agree or thinks that's uncool. Oh, oh, you mean you mean I shouldn't have said fag? Oh. I mean, sometimes you will get the, 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 the total loathsome whatever, but I mean, yeah. I, I think that, that for the most part, 
the 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 mount that I've that I've played, uh, somebody will throw that out and you say, "Dude, uncool." Oh, yeah, okay. And and it would basically just just shut down immediately. I think it's I think uh, honestly, from what I've heard, you can maybe correct me. Women have a lot harder time with that. Because you know, the, from the, from their impression, they don't know anything about me other than that I'm male, so I am part of right. the dude collective at least. Whereas you are an alien yeah. being from another universe. I, I played. I was playing around a round of Titanfall with uh, one of my buddy and his friends. Now I did not know them. Now this this guy I'm friends with, love him to death. Just mm -mm. his pals, the things they were saying, and these are not bad people. Like, I know these are not bad people, and I was just dying inside. I'm like, do you understand? I'm a girl. I'm here, and I can hear you. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Anyway, that's where we're being, we're being oh, kicked we, out, so we're, we're, we're done. Being... This is the end of the panel. We're getting the hook. <laughs> Thank you.